So the first thing I noticed about Fukuoka is the sky. It's very Simpson-esque, or actually it's more like Florida, my hometown. Fukuoka is in Kyushu, which is a southern island, and we're on the coast here. So it's very much like Florida. In fact, they even have a restaurant called Palm Beach Gardens, which is the city my family lives in in Florida. And it's quite similar. It's on a beautiful beach with beautiful blue oceans and clear blue skies with fluffy clouds. Also, Japan is known for people living in these small rabbit-like houses. But look at these houses behind me. They're massive. Down in Kyushu, at least. Not like Tokyo, where every house looks the same. Over here, we've got every house that looks completely different. Different colors, different designs. And they're all super well-maintained down here. And look at this white one coming up here. Fukuoka, I understand why people move here. It's absolutely gorgeous. And there's hills. Well, I'm going down one right now. And look at the view in front of me. A mountain. Oh man, I'm going too fast. Ooh. Another thing I like about Fukuoka is that you're reminded of like old Japan all the time. I mean, look at this playground here with this nice stone wall here. See that? And this is everywhere you go. It, it, it reminds you of like being in some sort of castle town. These big rocks behind me. And then over here, again, you've got that wall around the whole playground area. It's really a lovely place to visit. Downtown Fukuoka as well is amazing. Got more of a feeling of a, a foreign city, like of a Paris. I felt like I was in Paris a bit. The streets are wide, they've got nice restaurants, they've got huge entertainment centers. I mean, it's, it's very much similar to like a Yokohama where I live or maybe like a San Francisco sort of feeling. They've even got an Apple store and everyone's friendly here. We made it, Donzo. You need your iPad in here. Let's go. You wouldn't believe it. You're walking around. I feel like I'm a bit in America. Maybe that's because it's a bit of a, a southern type of atmosphere here. When you're walking around, people will actually say hello to you. They'll just say, konnichiwa. They'll say, hi, how you doing? It's quite different from... Uh... There goes the mailman. It's quite different from, say, like a Tokyo or Yokohama when people are much more cold and stand office. They even have a... There goes the mailman again. <laughs> they even have a huge entertainment district in downtown Fukuoka called Canal City, where they have a water show, much like the hotel in Las Vegas, the Bellagio, where they have that big water fountain show. They have the same sort of water fountain show at this place called Canal City. It's really marvelous, once an hour. Donza really liked it. So here's the message I wanted to share with you all today. At that super uber secret birthday party I went to the other day, some of the Japanese shihan spoke a few words. And among them was Noguchi Sensei. At 80 years old, he realizes that the most important thing is jiga o steru. Now jiga, what that means is yourself. Jiga is written with two characters, which basically means myself. Jiga o steru. Steru is the verb to throw away. So it means to throw away the self. You know, I was so happy to hear this message because year after year we got all these messages like, oh, we got to say the kihon and do your kihon properly and go outside and do a thousand kicks a day. And you know, this kind of stuff just got boring after a while. So I was super excited when he said at 80 years old he finally realizes the importance of Jiga o steru. And as I was thinking about this, as this was going through my mind, I came upon a post by Sean Askew. And I'm gonna link it down below. It's a conversation Sean had with Sensei a long time ago and he translated it into English. A big shout out to Sean Askew. Thank you so much for posting this. A big shout out to all you people in the Bujinkan who post things, who post your experiences, who come on podcasts to share your knowledge of this art and your knowledge of your time with Hatsumi Sensei with all of us. I think that's such a wonderful gift to the Bujikan community. I'm just going to read you a part of his conversation. Boy, it's quite loud out here on New Year's Day. All the kids in the park flying kites and stuff. In this conversation with Hatsumi Sensei, Hatsumi Sensei says, If you're born and given life, death is inevitable. When death comes, do not be surprised or shaken. Get on the rhythm of life. Get in balance with it. That is why I tell my students, it doesn't matter 
how skilled they become in the martial arts or even ninjutsu if they can't find that rhythm. This is the basis of the Kion Hapo, not forms. If you keep practicing forms, it does not produce any real results. Always doing forms is a childish way to practice. There are even times when the forms is that which gets you killed. When I hear my students argue about topics such as the correctness of the form or the posture should be this way, true combat or real fights are never correct in form or spirit. It's not about that. What an awesome message from Hatsumi Sensei coming from Sean Askew. So again, a big thank you to Sean Askew for sharing that. So for me, hearing Nogu Sensei finally talk about Jigao Steru and coming across Sean's post, it was a great pleasure. And I thought, boy, I'd sure like to share that with everybody here on New Year's Day. Let's go climb this thing. I got a phone and a camera in each hand. Ah. This also reminds me of a story that was shared with me by my good friend, Willie Iglesias in Argentina. It's about the mirror that you find in front of a Kamidana. But I'll save that for another video. The rest of this video is a conversation I had with Sui Sensei at my house, and it's the English translation of it. Now you probably heard the story. He tells the story of Hatsumi Sensei eating the egg in this one. But more than that, I just want you to watch the video. I want you to see how relaxed he is, how comfortable he is speaking, what a nice guy he is, how friendly he is, how open he is. And I'll tell you what, thinking that there was probably no better person to be the next Soke of Tokakuriryu than Sui Sensei. Just go watch it and get a feel for his character. I think you'll probably feel something that I felt. He's truly a wonderful gentleman and Sensei always said that to be a ninja you'd have to be the ultimate gentleman and Sensei was always that. So go ahead and take a look at Sui Sensei. You probably heard the stories. There's a few things that you might not have heard in there. Now this year I'd like to do a lot more podcasting a lot more YouTube videos, a lot more sharing with you all. And I really want to know, what do you guys want? Do you want more podcasts? Because I have a lot of people that I want to interview. So if you know someone that you want to hear from, who's been around for a long time or not a long time, or someone who's had some amazing experiences in the Bujinkan, please let me know. Contact them. Tell them that they should do a podcast. <laughs> Tell me what you want to see on the YouTube channels. I can do uh, Taijutsu. I can go places in Japan. Whatever you guys want, I'm willing to get it. I want to wish you all the best of Happy New Year. And hopefully see you soon. I got a feeling this next year is going to be great. So if you like the video, if you like this little tour of Fukuoka, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. Definitely leave a comment, tell me what you want, and we'll see you in the next year. Tsutsui Sensei, Togakuri Ryu, Soke. Yeah. Hontani arigatou Just two questions today. I want to ask him, Sensei, when he met him, the feeling that we met, met Sensei. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he thought Sensei was probably a very scary guy because he was a very famous martial artist at that time. He was about 53 maybe. But he wasn't scary at all. He was very kind and actually he actually treated him like his own son. In the film, there were there were three uh, brothers and sisters, and there was Sensei as a family. And so, like after the after they were filming, they Sensei would take them out to dinner and things like this. You know, there's some scenes where Sensei was teaching him about martial arts in the dojo when he's throwing him and things like this, and he said Sensei was very kind because at the uh, he would. Throw me so that I would be able to do ukemi. Just so, so, toki wa, I'm not ukemi wa. Ukemi, zenji dekin nai. Ah, so. Zenji dekin nai. Budo yatte nakatta ga. Ah, so he hadn't done any martial arts at that time, so he was just learning as he was going with Hatsumi Sensei. Then, mo ichi nenka ichi ni kyouen shite, kanari Hatsumi Sensei to ichi ni yara shite itadaite, iron na chotto zutsu manande itta. Ah, so he would have to actually learn the movements right there on set, right before they filmed, and 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 master them. And uh, after one year, he was finally able to, you know, have a certain amount of skill with Hatsumi Sensei. But Hatsumi Sensei to be together is important. Ah, ah, ah. 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 Ah, ah, ah.
こう勉強になるんだけど。ああ、now this is really interesting.、うん、I I I feel the same way. He says, you know, versus you know training with Hatsumi Sensei on the physical aspect, he says the thing I felt was most important was just being around Sensei, speaking with him and hearing from him. あ,あ、そう。うん、そう思いませんかでも。もちろん、俺もそう思いますよ。冗談の中にもちゃんとした真実がなんかあるっていうか。Uh, so I was asking him, well, what made those conversations, what made being around Sensei so special? And he says, well, in the midst of like、uh, joking and laughing, Sensei would have a really serious point or a really, you know,、uh, teaching in that, in that joke. So, I'm going to think, I'm going to think. So, Sensei here, I'd like to ask him about if there was any kind of situation that、uh, with Sensei that he remembers it and left a lasting impression on his mind. Okay. 撮影所にその日はあのゆで卵を持ってきてらっしゃったんですよ。四、uh-huh. つ、四つ。So sensei brought to the set one day four boiled eggs. <笑>それで子供が三人、三人子供がいて、mm-hmm. で先生の分と四つなんですよね。So there's a, you know, there's a three children, right? And then there's sensei as the family.、Mm-hmm. So he had, he brought four eggs. で卵食べていいよって言われて。So he had these four hard boiled eggs, I should say, hard boiled eggs. And he, and he gave them to each, each of the children, and then he had one for himself. で皮を剥こうとしたら先生がいきなり自分の分を皮殻ごとガブって食べてらっしゃって。So, so he says, you know, I started to peel my, my boiled egg to eat the egg, and he says, 先生 just took his egg and was like, and just bit down on his egg with the shell on it and everything. で先生殻を剥かないんですかって言ったら、いや剥かないよ殻にはたくさんカルシウムが入ってるんだからこのまま食べた方がいいんだよとか。So the kids were like. Sensei, what are you doing? I mean, aren't you, gotta, you gotta peel the egg. And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, you know, the shell has all the calcium. You gotta eat it like this. And he was just crunching on this, on this egg with a shell. So, he said, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. So, then, after he ate the egg,、uh, <laughs> there was blood coming off his gums because of the shell pieces. <laughs> he says, maybe Sensei is going to be angry at you. <laughs> We're telling this story. So, he says, please. Don't tell Sensei I told you this story. It's a secret story. <laughs> he says, I, he says I, but I took the shell off my egg. You know? <laughs> but he says, that was very surprising when Sensei bit into the egg. So I think the question that I get a lot, especially from the people、uh, overseas, is like, now that Tsui Sensei became the 35th Soke of Togaku Ryu, what's he going to do now? ちょっと荷が重いですね荷が重い So he says, you know, it's a very、uh, a big responsibility, right?、うん uh, でもあの最初だからあの筒井君次の総研でせあの三十四代初見先生に言われたときに、うんうん、いや先生も絶対できません無理ですってお断りしようかなとお断りしたんですけど、うん、もうそんな先生聞いてくれなくてもう勉強して三十五代ついてください。So he says, you know,、uh, when he was first told by Sensei, Hatsumi Sensei, that you're the next one, he says, you know, there's no, it's impossible. There's no way. He's like, please, you know, this, I can't do it.、Uh, but Sensei was like, no, you, you have to do it. I'm giving it to you. And now you have to study and practice and maybe rise to the occasion, maybe, right? そう、そうけなったら先生って呼ばれるじゃないですか。うん、もうそれもすごくあの恥ずかしくて。<笑>俺先生じゃないよと思ってるんですけど。まあまあ先生と呼ばれて。じゃあ先生と呼ばれるように一生懸命勉強しなきゃいけないなと思っちゃうし。だから今時々あの。筒井道場っていうのを不定期でやってるんですよ。he says you know when I was first told that I was sensei I was you know I was full of, I was a bit worried about you know what am I gonna do I haven't you know done too much with this。Uh, and he says, You know, I, I didn't, people were going to start calling me t- sensei, you know, and I said, I, I, I didn't know, I'm not, I'm not really sensei. And then, and then、uh, so he's like, But now I feel that, you know, it's my obligation, my duty now to study hard and fulfill that role as the next s o k i a Toga Ryu Ninpo. The Tsui Dojo, the no Toki Toki, my at the end of the day, and I was like, I'm not going to be able to do it. であの他の師範の先生に来てもらって、うん、一緒にみんなで楽しく忍術を学びましょうみたいな筒井道場をやってますああでそれをもっともっと大きくしていきたいなと今後はああそういうふうに思ってます So、はい、at the moment、uh, he's doing lessons、uh, they're not regularly、uh, once in a while because of this corona they'll get together 
and they have people, they bring in people that, you know, haven't done many martial arts yet, uh, and uh, who's interested in ninjutsu, and uh, they, they train. Um, we also, he also brings in some of the uh, Shihan from the Bujinkan to help out with that training, and he's thinking about keeping that going on, this training, and when Corona ends, to have a more, more of a regular training, and then to bring this, the Tsutsui Dojo, to a, a bigger and bigger, bigger uh, presence in the Bujinkan. So, 実は筒井道場の道っていう字が日本の漢字で道ではないんですよ。道引くな。道引く。道引くバナですよ。に筒井道場はその漢字にしてます。だからあの忍者道と私が教えるんではなくて、いろんな人を道引くこの世界に道引